Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of White Coats and Stilettos. And so today I brought my right hand, Chinadu, so she can introduce herself. Hi guys, I'm Chinadu. I'm also a third year medical student here at UT Hill San Antonio. So what we wanted to do for you guys today is give you a rundown of all of the classes that we took our first and second year, give you pretty much the difficulty of that class, the resources that we used, um, and what we wish we would have done differently if given the opportunity to take those classes again. So the first module we're going to talk about is A&D, which is attack and defense. And pretty much it just talks about like um, immunology and microbiology. Immunology is just learning about T cells, B cells, active, uh, adaptive immunity, stuff like that. Um, and the microbiology part is learning all about the organisms, the bacteria, the viruses, and all that good stuff. And pretty much what I would use to study is Sketchy Micro. So I use Sketchy and honestly it just helped a lot. Overall A and D I would say for our entire class on a scale of 1 to 10, um, just talking about its difficulty, I would say our class would give it an 8 out of 10. I mean it was pretty difficult. Like um, Now things that I would do differently if I had to take A and D again was um, probably start learning farm earlier. Um, I feel like I focused on farm maybe like the last week and a half before our, our final. Yeah, I completely 100,015 million percent <laughs> agree with studying farm as soon as you can. Okay, that's A and D. So we rated A and D a 8 out of 10. So our next class that we're going to talk about is hematology. And hematology is pretty much the study of the white blood cells, the red blood cells, pretty much our blood. So that class was only two weeks for us. I don't know how it is for everyone else, but because it was only two weeks, it had its own unique type of difficulty because you had to learn all that information as soon and as fast as possible. Anyway, so out of a scale of one to 10, I would give hemology maybe a five. So in terms of the best resources that I use for hemology or hematology, was uh, Pathoma. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it was good is because it broke down all of the, um, I guess, blood disorders. Mm -hmm. So your cancers and your uh, uh, proliferative cell disorders. Pathoma did a great job with explaining each of them one by one. I kind of spit on myself. <laughs> explaining each of them one by one and also giving you examples. So if there's anything that I would say I would do differently uh, if I could take hematology again is I would start from the very beginning and try to be on my um, studying instead of procrastinating, as well as making sure that I committed to learning all of the different translocations in terms of hematology and the disorders, because those things are gonna be very, very key for STEP. Yeah. And as we're doing, like in terms of the first and second year, the whole purpose of learning all this information is to prepare yourself for step one. So he hematology out of 10, it was a five. All right, so now we're gonna move on to respiratory. So respiratory, um, difficulty wise, I think our class would give it Maybe a four or five, honestly. Yeah, I um, four. Okay, a four. Yeah, because um, I did hear a lot of people who felt like it was even easier than um, hematology. So respiratory, you're pretty much learning all about the lungs. Um, you're learning all about the difference between obstructive disorders versus restrictive. You're learning about the COPD, the asthma, all of that good stuff. Um, so what I use for we just use the class handout. Yeah, I think that's all we use. They were so sufficient. They were very like in depth. Now, one thing that I wish I would have done differently for poem. Maybe do questions. Maybe I would have started U World at that time. Um, I hadn't started U World at all, so maybe I think if I got grasped like the type of questions they would be asking me, even though I will say it was straightforward. That was this was another module that was straightforward. I think that maybe would have helped me a little yeah. bit more. So honestly, I probably would have done questions now, knowing what I know now that step one takes respiratory on overdrive. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I mean, I think it's more because the physiology can be so difficult, especially when you're talking about compliance and like chest walls. And it, I think that's where it gets like a little bit tricky. So take into consideration actually committing to learning the physiology. Yeah. The physiology part of respiratory is high, high yeah, yield, yeah. high yield. And I don't think I really did that much during uh, class. Um, so yeah, so respiratory, we gave it a four. Okay. Next class that we took was cardiology. And on a scale of one to 10, I would give cardiology a nine and a half. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna agree here. Yeah. I was just waiting to see because, yeah. yeah. It's, I would it's give nine. it a nine and a half. Um, on step one, I would give it a nine and a half, 10. Like, no, 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 no. For me on step one, I'm gonna give it an eight and a half. Either but way, it the was, module was definitely nine, 10-ish. Yeah. yeah. Our, our, our cardio, uh, cardiology module here was very, very, very difficult. Um, there were a lot of factors that played into that difficulty, um, but to take into consideration cardiology, the physiology of cardiology is out of this world, like physics. Yeah. A lot of us didn't like physics in um, college. Physics is like a different language. Well, cardiology is like a different language. So, so in terms of the resources that I use for card, uh, cardio, I use the, um, what is it called? What was it called? Rapid Inter interpretation of EKG. Uh-huh, and also first aid. 
And I think First Aid did a really good job with explaining some of the physiology parts of car uh, cardio, which will be very helpful and it will be honestly um, helpful for you to start that as well to give you a better baseline when you start studying for step one. Because when studying for step one, cardio is gonna take a good percentage of your study time because just the, the physiology of cardio is so, you know, it's hard. There's just a lot of information that um, encompasses cardio, which made the class a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. So if there's one thing I would have done differently if given the opportunity to take cardio again, which I honestly would never want to ever do ever in my life, I would honestly commit more time to studying um, with my first aid book. I would commit more time to doing new world questions because those honestly, to, in my opinion, gave more information than some of the handouts in my class actually did. All right, so that's cardio. We gave it a 9.5 out of 10. So our next module is renal. Renal. <laughs> our class will give renal a 10 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> renal was crazy. I mean, the kidneys are, they're an amazing organ. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just do a lot, do a lot for us mm -hmm. in your bodies. And it was pretty intense. Um, for renal, I used our handouts in class. I used first aid. And I want to say I use Pathoma for renal too. I don't, I, yeah, I think those are the only three resources I use for renal. Um, wow, renal was, it, it really broke my heart how hard it was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was crazy. Especially coming off of cardio and then you go into renal, you're just like, oh my gosh, my mind is blown even more. Um, I think if I could do anything different for renal, I definitely would have done your question. Definitely. I got to my test and I was just like, huh? <laughs> um, wait, I didn't learn that. I don't know what, what? Another thing is, Farm. Renal pharmacy, like, <laughs> they, it's so many drugs that affect your kidneys or that are nephrotoxic and all this other stuff. So, um, well, yeah, renal was, renal was tough. Yeah. It was definitely a 10 out of 10. And I would say it was a 10 out of 10. This is the reason. The actual module and learning the information, in my opinion, was straightforward. It was difficult yeah. at, at times, but what made it a 10 out of 10 is once we got into that exam and we saw those questions, we were just like, wow, I didn't study the right <laughs> yeah, way. So that, 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 that's what made uh, renal a 10 out of 10. Also, because we just, you know, got mind blown with cardio and so our minds are really tired. It's almost the end of our first year. We're fatigued. So that's another thing that uh, played into the fact that renal was also a 10 out of 10. So there are a lot of factors that made renal a 10 out of 10. It was honestly a course or a module that was destined to fail, okay? <laughs> so yeah. um, just be prepared for renal to be a very important part of step one as well. So learn all of the physiology, learn the farm. And again, the resources, Pathoma is really, really, really key for your nephr nephritic oh and nephrotic syndromes. Oh my Pathoma gosh. Pathoma for nephritic and nephrotic like go over those videos as many times as you possibly yes. can. Yeah. So we gave Reno a great 10 out of 10. <laughs> so the next course that we took started our second year of medical school and it was neurology. And out of a scale of a one out of 10, I would give it a two or a three. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's say three. Okay. There's no medical, okay, maybe so, but not neuro, neuro's not, okay. Okay, yeah. I'll give it a three to four, okay. Let's be nice about it. Wait, poem was a four? Poem was a four. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so three, three, three point five was yeah. neuro. <laughs> and now, initially coming into medical school, I thought neuro was going to be the hardest subject that I would take. Um, the re but the reason why for our school specifically, neuro wasn't as difficult was because our lecturers were amazing. They told us exactly what we needed to know, how we needed to know it. They gave us the right resources that we needed to use to the point that we didn't need to go outside to look at first aid, to do pathoma. We didn't need anything but our actual uh, module directors and that's it and it was so helpful for us um the exam was also straightforward our midterm was straightforward and taking a uh, taking a step further in terms of step it was also it's, i still knew a great amount from what i learned during my module so i would say neuro was one of the most straightforward um, courses that we had um in terms of uh, so yeah resources i didn't really use anything outside of our actual class material but if I could do something different for neuro, I would definitely do first aid and I would definitely do you world. Um, step one has a lot, a lot of neuro and more specifically, they have a lot of psychiatry. Yeah. So I think I didn't pay that much attention to psychiatry during the module because I was like, it's all straightforward. But once you look at the questions that you world asks you in terms of psychiatry, you'll realize that it's not as straightforward as you think it is. So spend more time on psychiatry than you probably would. Yeah. Um, another thing I would say about neuro, especially for step is the pharmacy. Um, uh, you need to know a lot of the drugs, especially for like seizures, epilepsy. It's, it's just a lot. Even with um, like neuroendocrine and a lot of the tumors and stuff, you need to know. Yeah. Good. 
um, which to be honest, a lot, a lot of step pharmacy is neurology yeah, and psychiatry. It's like, yeah, it is. It's a lot. So if there's one farm that you want to really know a lot about, make sure that it is neuro. Yeah. Neuro and A and D, those are some of the two farms that you really want to make sure you know a lot of. And their adverse reactions mm -hmm. and side effects, you have to know them with the neuro drugs, yeah. The so drugs. we did neuro, we rated it a three out of five. So our next module that we took was endocrine female reproductive system. Um, so for me, this is my favorite module. <laughs> I mean, I just, I loved it so much. But for my class, I think we would give EFR a, maybe an eight? A seven. Okay, a seven, okay, a seven. Um, I think going into it, we thought it was gonna be a 10 because we were warned that it's super hard and the class before us thought it was super hard and stuff like that. So we'll give it a seven. Um, for endocrine female repro, for the most part, I used class resources. They were very helpful, the handouts. I think, um, Endocrine female repros when I started using U World, and I think U World was amazing for this. Um, I don't know how many questions it was that I, that I went through, but I went through a good amount. Um, I also used First Aid for um, Endocrine Female Repro. I thought it was it was okay. It wasn't as helpful as U World was, but for the most part, I think my class handouts were just very in depth. Um, um, if I had to do anything different for Endocrine Female Repro, I don't know. what would you have done? I don't know if I would have done anything <laughs> different, honestly. Um, I would have probably done more U World questions. Okay. Yeah, um, but overall, we'll give um, Endocrine Female Repro a 7 out of 10. All right, so the next uh, class or module that we took was GI. And uh, what does GI stand for? Gastrointestinal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That was actually my favorite class, and I would give that class, honestly, maybe a 5 and a half out of 10 because the class was very, very straightforward. Um, any resources outside of the ones that was given to us in class, I don't think I really used. I started using U World, U World questions, so maybe that's why I felt GI was so helpful for me um, while I was doing my step one studying. So in terms of things that I probably would have done differently for GI, um, I probably wouldn't have done anything different for GI because I think I did actually the best that I could have done for GI. I learned everything I needed to learn. Granted, another big important um, section of step one and all of your clerkship exams will be GI because once you go to the hospital, everybody has a stomach ache. Yeah. So they, they make an effort to make sure that you know GI. Yeah. Um, I think for me, for GI, um, I think if I would have focused more on like the minerals and the vitamins that can manifest as GI problems or you know diarrhea, all that stuff. I think if I would have focused more on that, I think I would have done a little bit better in the class because I think those were pretty significant components of it for, I mean, for the most part. So um, another thing about GI, just because it's straightforward, don't, you know, don't downplay how the exam is going to be. Use U World to gauge your learning as you're studying and to kind of gauge what your exams are going to look like. Yeah. So for GI, we gave it a nice, what we, did, what we gave it? A five, I got a 5.5. Oh, 5.5, yeah. all right. All right, we're moving on to MSK, our last module. Oh my God, almost done. So MSK is musculoskeletal um, and derm. So derm was also included in this for us. So MSK, I mean, for the most part, pretty straightforward. So we also had an anatomy component mixed in with this as well. So MSK, you're pretty much talking about um, joints. I mean, uh, what else are you talking about? You're talking about the first week was just dermatological diseases and disorders, um, rheumological. Room is also a big component of um, MSK. So MSK, overall, I think we would give it maybe a four mm -hmm. out of 10. I think the anatomy part was very straightforward, so it helped a lot with just knowing the physiology as well. Um, for resources, the class notes were very helpful in handouts. Um, what else did I use? I just used you all. Okay. Our anatomy sessions correlated with what part of the body we were focusing on. Mm -hmm. So I think that correlation really solidified everything we were learning in class. Yeah. The anatomy section of MSK, I think, is one of the most important parts of MSK. And what I noticed for step one, I didn't really have to go into too much depth yeah. regarding MSK. Uh, I probably also, I think it helped that we had it at the end of our second year, yeah. so it was still fresh on our minds. Yeah. So, yeah. I think two, the two most important things that I think you should know as a first and second year medical student is start first aid as early as you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just summarizes things so beautifully, it's so helpful. Start UWorld. I know some schools don't, don't give UWorld subscriptions, but just buy it, guys. Like, you're gonna need it. As early as you can get it, just start doing questions. So although nothing is going to be as great as UWorld, there are also other options that you can use prior to actually using UWorld. Yeah. Um, so that concludes the breakdown of all the modules that we took our first two years. But other than that, if you have any questions for me, for Tuna Do, anything, just let me know. Um, feel free to email me, put a um, comment down in the comment box. Um, I'll do my best to get to them. <laughs> um, she is a third year, so we yeah. do have a work schedule and we're studying yeah. on top of that. So. And we just finished surgery, so you know, I'm kind of <laughs> regaining my life yeah. and sleep and stuff like that. So 
All right, guys, until next time, I will see you later. And hopefully I'll see you again. Yes. So our next class that we're going to talk about is hemology. So hemology is pretty much- Hematology. A <laughs>